My name is Don Marie, and this is DM's Crafty Vortex. Today is Monday, October 12th. It's the year 2020. I figured I'd give the year because I'm hoping this video will be around for a while. This is not going to be my typical cross stitch video. This is actually going to be a tutorial. This is going to be a tutorial on how I make my cross stitch bag. Here is the bag I'll be making today. This bag has a handle. And it has an interior pocket, so if you open it up, you have the original pocket you're used to seeing, and then there's an additional pocket on the inside that you can put your pattern in or anything else that you want to hide. So my daughter asked me to make this bag, so this is the fabric we're going to use. I know I talked in my floss tube about using a different fabric, but I figured I had to make this one anyway, so we would go ahead and film with this one. So this is a two colored bag. I've also made some three colored bags and this is one I just made for a friend. So it has this really cute dolphin fabric. But when you open it up, there is the interior pocket is a different color. It helps distinguish that interior pocket from the rest. So this is a three colored bag, but the tutorial today will be about a two colored bag. So if you're ready, we're gonna head on over to the cutting table and we're gonna get started. Here's everything you'll need to make the bag. We have some double stick tape, just a pair of snips. I use three presser foots. I have my zipper foot, my regular foot, and my walking foot. I'm using a crochet hook. You don't need a crochet hook. You can use anything that's long and has a rounded end. The chopsticks you get at the grocery store work really good. I have pins. You want thread that matches your main fabric. I have two rotary cutters. I have one for just my fabric and I have one that will go over the zipper and anything else that I cut that isn't necessarily fabric. You can go with just one rotary cutter if you want. As I stated earlier, I did start out sewing as a quilter, so I do have a couple of different rotary cutters and it's nice to save the battery. I have an 18 inch all-purpose zipper. Again, you want something that kind of just goes with your fabric. It's a, it is not a metal zipper. You don't want metal as it will wreck your, your needle and it will definitely wreck your rotary cutter. So again, just an all-purpose, durable, flexible zipper. You can go longer than 18 inches because we're going to be cutting it, but you don't want to go shorter than 18 inches. I have my pocket fabric, which is cut at 27 inches by 18 and a half. I do make multiple bags when I make them, so I buy a few yards of fabric. However, if you only want to buy a half a yard of fabric and you get 18 inches, just make everything about a half inch smaller and you can go with 18 inches by 27. I have two pieces of fabric cut at... 16 by 18 and a half inches. I cut two strips four inches and then I cut them in half so I have four strips at four inches wide. I have two strips cut at two inches. They've also been cut in half so those are now four strips at two inches wide. I have a piece of vinyl. It's hard to see but this is cut at 12 by 15 and a half. It's just vinyl you can buy at Joann Fabrics. I get the medium 12 grade. I find that the thinner grade is not as durable and if you go any higher than the 12 grade it's too thick for what you want to use it for. I have fusible stabilizer. This is cut at 13 and a half by 18 and a half and again you could do it 13 and a half by 18 if you wanted to go with a half yard of fabric. And then I have fusible fleece. This is cut at 16 by 18 and a half. Then you just want some quality rulers for cutting. The next step we're going to do after everything's cut is we're going to go to the ironing board and get everything prepped. Most of your sewing is either done at the cutting mat or at the ironing board. You actually have very little time at the sewing machine. So now we'll go on to the next step. Now to cut your fabric, I have it folded twice. When you fold your fabric, you kind of want to just shake it out a little bit and make sure that it's all on the straight of grain. And then I did square up my end. Now what I want to do, I apologize if the mic cord gets in the way. 
So I'm going to cut one cut at 28 inches, just going down the line of my, my mat and making sure everything's squared up. I apologize for the dog toys in the background. The next cut is going to be done at 12 inches. Eight inches. We'll see if my mic cord lets me make it all the way to the end. Four inches. And two inches. I've already squared up my fabric so I won't have to cut again at the zero mark. But this now gives me my two two inches, my two four inches, and this will be my 16 by 18 and a half. So what you want to do with these is you always want to make sure you cut off the salvage piece. I'll just go to a smaller ruler. If you only have one ruler, that's fine. But as I stated earlier, I started out sewing as a quilter, so I have plenty of rulers. I always tend to go to the smallest ruler I can use. Then I'm going to flip it around. And I'm going to cut off this edge. So now I have my four two inch strips. I'll do it again with my four inch strips. Again, you want to cut off the salvage. You don't want to end up accidentally leaving that on and having that be part of your sewed piece. Flip it around. Trim off the other end. And now you have your four four inch strips. Then for the inside in the back, I'm just going to double check. This was cut at 16 inches. So again, we're going to take off that salvage piece. I'm going to go back to my long ruler. And I'm not using the lines on the mat right now. I'm just using the lines on my ruler going along the bottom of my fabric, making sure everything's straight. Making sure I don't cut my mic cord because then you would not be able to hear me anymore. And now for this, I want it to be 16 by 18 and a half. And again, as I said, if you're just making one bag, you probably want to go at 18 inches. This way you can just buy a half a yard of fabric and call it good. If you go for the 18 and a half, you'll have to buy another quarter yard of fabric. And that's all my main fabric cut. Then I would turn around and do the same thing with my interior fabric. I would line it all up and I would cut just one piece at 18 and a half. And then I would go ahead and cut it 27 inches because it is going to be folded in half. I've already cut up that piece of fabric. I don't have spare to show you how to cut that, but you're just going to do it the same way I showed you how to cut the rest of this fabric. From here, we're going to go to the ironing board. I like to get everything ironed before I start sewing. I like to get all my cutting done, then as much ironing done as possible, then you hit the sewing machine. Most of your sewing is done at your ironing board. Uh, if you want those good, clean, crisp corners and you want everything to look professional, you want to make sure you're taking the time to iron. Now we're going to get our ironing done before we go to the sewing machine. We're going to start with the pocket fabric. So what I did is folded this in half. So the 27 inches got folded down. So now it's 18 by 
13 and a half. We're going to give it a nice press. Then we're going to take the fusible stabilizer and I'm going to put that in the center. This is just going to give the pocket a little bit more stability and it will handle a little bit more wear and tear. And all stabilizers are a little bit different on how to use them, so just go by the manufacturer directions that come with the product. And we have that piece all fused. Now you're going to want to go to your fusible fleece and you're going to take one of your main pieces of fabric that you cut. Just going to set that on top. And again, you're just going to go by your manufacturer's directions, however it tells you to fuse it down. Just going to press it. This piece is the inside of your pocket. If you want, you can go with a third color. If you go with a third color for this piece, I'll show you what a bag looks like at the end with an inside that's a different color. You're not going to see this fabric unless the zipper is actually open. So I'm just going with my main fabric, but sometimes it's fun just to add that extra pop of color. Now I take this piece that has the fusible, there's a little bit of thickness to it, and I use this to get my vinyl a little bit smoother. You don't ever want the vinyl to touch the iron. If it touches the iron, it's going to melt instantly. But if you put it under the fusible, and you just give it a quick press, That'll smooth out your vinyl for you. So that's all nice and pressed and flat. It is warm, so it's a little bit more pliable, so you want to be very careful with it until it cools back down. Now I'm going to take my two inch strips. We have four of those. These three have already been pressed. But what we're going to do is press it in half. And then we're going to press both sides in. I do have one of those bias tape makers. I don't use it for this because I find it's not quite accurate enough for what I want. Two of these are going to be sewed right together next to each other, and you really want them to fit perfectly. So I'm just going to fold this in half and press. Open it up, and now you're going to fold it in quarters right along that line. You want to make sure at this point you do not burn your fingers with the steam. I'm going to flip it around and do the same to the other side. So now these are my four two-inch strips, all pressed. And then we have the four four-inch strips. Three of them are going to get pressed one way, and one is going to get pressed another. 
So one of these strips is going to be my handle. So for the handle, you're going to just press it in half. Open it up. Press it to the center line, just like you did with the two inch strips. Flip it around and do the other side. And then you're going to fold this in half. So you do this to just one strip and this becomes your handle strip. Then for your other three four inch strips, again we're going to press it in half. Then press it to the center line. Do the same to the other side. At this stage, we're going to open it up and I'm going to press it one more time to the line that I just made here. Flip it around and do the same thing to the other side. And then we're going to press this in half. So we'll have three strips all pressed that way. And then we just have our last remaining backing piece. And you're just going to give that a nice little press to have it nice and flat. And we're all done at the moment at the ironing board. Let's head over to the sewing machine. To sew the zipper on, I'm going to go all the way over, moving my needle position to just one before the end. And then I have a couple of pins in holding my fabric so the front and back are in place. As I said earlier, I am not a seamstress, so if you have a better way to sew a zipper on, you go for it. This is the way I know how, so this is what we're going to go with. I have my needle in the down position. I'm going to go right along the edge of my zipper and get just a couple of stitches in and then I'm going to take the two two inch strips of fabric I'm going to do one on the top one on the bottom and then I have a little mark on my sewing machine right here that I'm just going to let the edge go right up against and this allows me to be consistent all the way down the length of the zipper now I only do a few pins as I go I found that if I try to pin the entire length the fabric starts to move and then I end up having to repin anyways so I'll just get this started so I'm keeping the edge of the zipper here and I'm keeping my eye on this line as I sew after I get a few stitches in I'll lift my foot and I'll close up my zipper. Then after I go down a little bit, I'll line up the two edges and just throw an extra pin in and I just keep pinning as I go. And then I just keep sewing on down the line. 
I'm going to get all the way to the end of the zipper and then I'll come back and show you the next step. So I have this side all ironed. Now I'm just going to flip the zipper around. I'm going to take my other two strips and I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side. And I'll be back at you as soon as the step's done. So now I finished sewing on my zipper. I am going to add a second row of stitches. I'm going to use the zipper foot for that. Just with all the wear and tear that a zipper gets, I like to have that second row for stability. To do that, I'm going to switch to my zipper foot. But before I do that, I'm going to do a row of stitching on my handle. I like to get everything done with this presser foot before I have to go on to the next presser foot. What I'm going to do now is take my needle and I'm going to move it to the other side of my foot. And I'm going to go all the way over to the edge this time. So I'm bringing that needle as far to the right as I can get. I'm going to sew along this edge and then I'm going to sew along this edge and that's going to give this a little bit more stability. So I'm just going to line it right up to the edge. I'm not going to worry about back stitching because this is going to be sewn inside the bag and I'm just going to stitch along the length. And I'll come back to you when I'm done. I've stitched on both sides of my handle. So now that step's all done and that handle is ready to go. I've switched my foot to my zipper foot. I'm now going to move the needle back to the other side again. And again, I'm not going all the way to the edge. I'm going one away from the edge. The reason I'm going one away is if my stitching isn't perfect and I'm all the way to the edge, I might not catch the fabric in the back. So if you go just one over, that just gives you that little extra wiggle room so that you're sure you're getting the back fabric in. Now when I sew on this, what I do is I line the edge of my foot up with the edge of the fabric, not the edge of the zipper. And again, that just makes sure that I'm catching the fabric underneath. And I've got that one over, and then I'm just going to stitch along the length. I'm going to stitch all the way down this side, I'm going to flip it around, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I will meet you back over at my cutting board. So now we've sewed both seams on each side. Before you go to the next step, what you want to do is make sure that your zipper opens and closes, that you didn't sew too close to the zipper. So now I'm going to take this top piece of the zipper and I'm going to iron it open. The reason I ironed it closed to begin with is it gives me that nice measurement at my sewing machine so that I know I'm getting the accurate measurement in as close to the zipper as I want to be on both sides. Now that we're all pressed, we're going to go ahead and add the vinyl. So I'm going to add the vinyl to the bottom of the zipper, but before I do that, I'm just going to get rid of these extra little overlaps of flap. I'm going to be cutting the zipper again after, so I'm not worried about this being a straight line. Now I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to line it up along one of the lines on my cutting board. and just press that open a little bit so I'll be able to get in there. So we're going to want to put this vinyl right in here so that we'll be able to sew. This is where the double stick tape comes in handy. You don't want to pin through your vinyl because it'll leave holes, but if you just take your double stick tape, put it right along the edge. I do three little pieces, one in the middle, one on each end then you're going to put that right on in your zipper try and line the edge of your vinyl up along one of the lines so that you know the vinyl is going in straight
You can reposition, so if you don't get it right where you want, pull it up, you can put it back down. This tape will come up and off the fabric. It will not come off the vinyl though, so make sure when you put it on the vinyl, you get it where you want on that. Then I'm gonna tape the other side. Because the vinyl is see-through, you do want to make sure that the front of your fabric is a little bit farther over than the bottom of your fabric. If the bottom fabric is farther, it is going to show through the vinyl. And now we're ready to go back to the sewing machine. I've switched my presser foot over to my walking foot, and now I'm going to move my needle one more time all the way over to the edge. And then I'm just going to stitch along the length of this. It vinyl is sticky, so it will try to stick to your your sewing machine bed. So if you don't have the walking foot on, you'll probably find that it's going to grip a little bit. I don't have a Teflon foot, but the walking foot looks works just fine for me. So I have it lined up. There's a little mark in my walking foot right there. And I have the edge of my fabric lined up with that. And then again, I have my needle all the way over as far as it will go and I'll just start stitching. I'm just gonna stitch to the end and I'll meet you back at the cutting board. So now we're gonna add the bottom of the fabric to the vinyl. If you have directional fabric, you want to make sure you're paying attention. This technically is not directional fabric. I have cats going in both directions. So you got the white cats going down, you get the black and the orange cats facing up. However, for my personal taste, I want to make sure that all the cats that are the same color go in the same direction. So I want all the white cats going down up here as well as here, and I want all the black cats going up this way. So I'm just going to line this up along the line. I'm going to flip this over and add tape to the back just again. And that's the real cat. Again, just so that when I flip it over, I have the, the fabric going in the direction I want. I do recommend the first time you make a bag, try to get fabric that doesn't have any directionality to it and it will make things a little bit easier for you. So I'm just going to do like I did before, put my tape on. I'm going to flip it over, line the vinyl up along the line, just so that I know it's going on straight. Put tape on the other side. it down again I'm paying attention to make sure that the back doesn't show through the vinyl I'm going to go to the sewing machine I'm going to sew this bottom piece on the same exact way I, sh I sewed the top piece on and then I'm actually just going to meet you right back here when I'm done so now we have the top and the bottom sewed on I'm going to trim up this right edge of my fabric I'm going to make sure that I use the rotary cutter that I don't use for fabric only because it is going to go through a zipper and I don't want to wreck that blade. So because vinyl is hard to see, I have it lined up along the, the yellow line of my cutting mat. That way I'm worrying about the yellow line and not worrying about the edge of my vinyl. I'm 
and this will just cut right through that zipper. Now we have a nice clean edge to work with. And then I'm going to take my next four inch piece that I had all nice and ironed. I'm going to put it along this edge. Just going to do my three pieces of tape again. That's just my iron shutting off in the background. Now when I stick this on, again, I want to pay attention trying to get this to go straight this way. I think the hottest part about making this whole bag is taking the paper off the tape. So we're going to fold this over. Now on this step I am going to start pinning just because I do have this extra fabric on the end that is not being held in place by the tape. I like to pin on both sides of my zipper just so it doesn't shift while I'm sewing. Now I'm just going to cut off a little bit of this extra fabric so it doesn't get in the way at the sewing machine. And I'm going to go sew this piece on the same way I sewed on both edges and I will meet you back here for the next step. Now that we have this side sewed on, we're going to do the other side of the bag. The most important step to remember is to open your zipper. If you leave your zipper closed and you go and cut off your extra fabric, you're going to cut off your zipper piece and then your zipper won't open and close. So again, I have my vinyl lined up with the line. I'm going to just make sure that I push this zipper closed so that it's even when I cut it. Put a little bit of pressure on it. Make sure I'm using my non-fabric rotary cutter. Cut through the zipper. And then cut my other edge. At this point, I can close up my zipper. You just want to be careful you don't go too fast and then you go right off the edge and again you lose that zipper piece. Now I'm going to tape and pin this on just like I did the other side. The only difference is when I pin it, I'm just going to make sure I push this closed when I pin. So you can see here when I pinned, I made sure that the zipper was still closed. But you are going to want to open this when you sew so that the zipper doesn't hit the presser foot. Now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and again I'm going to sew this side just like I did the other three sides and I'll meet you back here in just a minute. Now that we have the whole edge of your bag sewed, we're going to go ahead and trim this up and get on to the next step. I'm back to using my fabric rotary cutter. I'm just going to trim along the edge of this. For this side, I'm actually going to put the ruler on the outside edge. If I try to flip it around and trim, I'm going to deal with that zipper and it's going to make the ruler all wonky. So I'm just going to kind of line this up along one of the lines of my cutting mat. 
Make sure everything's straight. And trim right along the edge. So now we're ready for the next step. We're going to bring the piece of fabric over that has the fusible fleece on it. This is going to be the interior of your pocket and we will lay this down. Again, if you have directional fabric, at this point you would worry about making sure the direction is going in the way that you want. I do have a bag with spiders that are floating up instead of coming down off their web. Then you're going to take your pocket fabric and you're going to lay that down on top of this. I do cut everything a little bit oversized so you have some wiggle room. Then you're going to take your top and you're going to lay this on top. Now I'm going to line it up along the bottom of the, the interior pocket right here. So this way when you open it up, you'll see the interior pocket and you'll see the inside of the bag. I don't want this up too far so it doesn't get caught in your zipper. And now I'm just going to pin all along the edge. So I have everything all pinned around my edges. I want to add the handle before I go to the sewing machine. I like to go five in on each side. So I'm just going to count my squares. One, two, three, four, five. And then that line, I'm going to put it right in the middle. And I'm going to line it up with my front piece of fabric. Now I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going based on this edge. And I have one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to pin it. Now when I pin this, the inside is the edge that's separated and the outside is the solid edge. So now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to baste this all together. So I have my needle all the way over to the right hand side. I'm going to take my stitch length and I'm going to go to the longest length possible because I'm just basting all these pieces together. This isn't the actual stitching that will come next. I am going to back stitch though. And now I'm just going to baste all the way around. I'm not going to leave any openings and I'm going to make it all the way to the side and then I'll meet you back at the cutting board. Now it's all basted and we're going to trim up the edges. I actually like trimming from the other side and I go based on my sew line. So again, I'm going to use my, my fabric one and I'm going to do right along the eighth of an inch in. I'm just going to neaten this up a little bit because the zipper is right there and that makes your ruler just a little bit wonky. So there we go. And you want to make sure you do not cut that, your strap off. So 
I have the zipper right there. I'm going to go up just beyond the zipper a little bit. And I'm going to trim and then I'm just going to move my zipper so that it's out of the way. Again, make sure that my strap is safe for my cutting. And I, now I have my bag all nice and trimmed and I'm going to go to the next step of pinning piece of fabric. Again, if this was directional, this would be the point in time to pay attention to it. You want to make sure that it's going in the same direction as the front. We're going to put this right sides together. Make sure that the handle is on the inside and I like the zipper to be closed. And again, I like the fabric to be just a little bit oversized so you don't have to worry about having perfect alignment. Now, one of the things I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to make sure that I leave an opening. I like to make it six inches wide. So what I will do is just kind of go in the middle. and put a pin. And then I'll go over three squares and I put two pins. This just reminds me when I'm sewing that this is where I need to stop and leave my opening. Otherwise, I'll just sew all the way around. And then I want to do the same on the other side, go over about three inches and double pin it. Now I'm going to pin all the rest of the way around and I'll meet you at the sewing machine. So now I'm going to move my needle position over so that I'm taking a nice quarter inch seam allowance versus my eighth inch seam allowance. I want to make sure that this is in here secure. I'm also going to put my, neat, my thread length back down because we had it at a basting stitch. So I'm going to get back down to about 2.5. I'm going to take a few stitches and then I'm going to back stitch. This is now one of the seams that's going to be holding your bag together, so you want to make sure everything's nice and secure. You make sure you don't sew over any pins, you don't want them breaking and getting into your eye. We want to make sure we have a nice straight corner. This way when you're turning it out, everything looks perfect on your edges. Now we're coming up to the double pin area. This is the area that we're going to leave open. So I want to take a good five or six stitches back and then forward, take the pins out, lift up your foot and go over to your next double pin section. Put your needle back down, take these two pins out, do a few stitches forward, a few stitches back. And now I'm just going to continue around the whole edge of the rest of the bag and I'll meet you back at the cutting table. Now we've sewed around all four edges and we've kept the six inch opening at the bottom and we're going to trim up along our edge.
Because of the zipper, again, I'm going to trim on the outside edge. But because of the extra width here, it's just going to go right up against it, no problem. In order to get a nice squared off edge, I'm going to just nip off these little corner pieces. You want to make sure you do not nip your main thread. It's okay to cut into your basting thread, but you want to make sure your main thread stays safe. You're going to do this to all four corners. So now you're going to find the opening edge and you're going to want to push this through. Be gentle with the vinyl. You don't want to get too much of a crinkle in it. You may be tempted to make that opening a little bit smaller so you have less to sew together after, but you want to have plenty of room to get that vinyl through. Just going to keep wiggling it through. This is where I use my crochet hook. Again, anything long and rounded will work. You don't want too pointy of a tip because it will rip through your fabric. So I'm just going to kind of take this in and it's going to help me smooth out those corners. And you want to be a little gentle here. You don't want anything to poke through your fabric at this point in time. And now I'll see you at the ironing board. So now we need to iron again before we go on to the next step. You want to be really careful at this step. If this iron touches this vinyl at all, you've wrecked your entire bag. This is what happens if the iron touches the vinyl for even a second. So you want to be really careful. I like to iron based on the other side of my bag. This way I know my iron's far away from the vinyl. Again, I want to just get a nice crisp edge going. I try not to hold my iron in place too long because that vinyl is underneath it. You do want to give a slight press to the back. This will also smooth out the vinyl from when you spun the bag inside out. And you see how all those wrinkles are now gone. And we need to take care of this opening. So I have my pins. I'm just going to fold this in a little bit on both sides. Give it a nice little press. And we're going to pin it shut. And 
I'm going to see you back at the sewing machine. So before I sew around the edge, I do like to sew this opening closed by hand. I'm just going to show you the stitch that I do to sew it closed. If you have a stitch that you prefer, you can go ahead and use that. I do not like using the whip stitch. This is the stitch I use when I'm sewing a binding on a quilt. I'm just going to get my thread up to where I want it. The quilter in me does not put any knots in my thread. So I'm just going to do a couple of tiny stitches in place just to secure my thread. So the stitch that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little stitch, then I'm going to come directly in front of that stitch, and I'm going to take a stitch. Then I'm going to go directly in back and take another stitch. So I'm not doing a, witch, a whip stitch over. And you see as I pull it, you can't even see the thread. So again, take a stitch directly in front of that stitch. Then take a stitch directly in back. Pull it tight, do it again, directly in front, directly in back, and look at the seam. You can't even see the stitches. So I'm going to continue along the edge, and then I'll see you back at the iron board. Now that I've finished sewing the seam shut again, see how invisible that stitch is? A good friend of mine, Sue, showed me how to do this stitch probably about 18 years ago. She used to own a quilt shop, and I have never done a bind in any other way since she's taught me this stitch. So we're just going to give this seam a little bit of a press. Again, thank you, Sue, so much for showing me how to do this seam. And then one last time to the sewing machine. So now I'm going to put my needle back all the way over to the right and I'm going to drop my stitch length down to one. Put my needle down. I'm just going to take a couple of tiny stitches, just a couple back. And because I dropped my stitch length down so small, that's going to lock that in place. Now I'm going to go back up to about three, and I'm going to stitch all the way around the edge. I'm going to finish going around the edge, and I'll meet you at the other side. Now we're coming back to the beginning. We want to pay attention. We want to make sure that stitch lines up perfectly with this stitch. Otherwise, you're going to be able to see it go a little wonky. So I kind of want to go a little slow. And just about here, as that stitch disappears under the needle, I'm going to drop my stitch length back down to one again so that I'm going to lock my end of the stitches in place. Take a couple of stitches. And then now that they're overlapping, I'll take a couple of stitches back. And the bag's done. So now you know how to make your own cross stitch bag. This bag measures about 15 by 17 and a half when you're done, which is a great size for a cross stitch bag, I think. You can fit your 11 inch Q-snap in it. If you go ahead and buy just the half yard of interior fabric, this should be about 15 by 17, which is still a really great size for a bag. Let me know when you make your own bag, how it comes out, if you had fun. Comment below, subscribe, hit the like button, give me a thumbs up. Tell me how your bag making adventure goes. I have twins, so I am off to make a second bag with this beautiful fabric for my other daughter. Have a wonderful night and happy crafting.